Hey guys, I'm glad to have you join me today. We're going to break open the Bible and we're going to take a look at who God is. Because if you want to know who God is, you've got to go to the Bible. You can find out that Jesus existed and all that, and other philosophy um, showing that God exists somewhere else. But if you want to know who God is, you got to go to his autobiography, the Bible. So, let's dig in. Guys, we're going to be talking about the grace of God, okay? Last week, if you watched that video, we talked about mercy. Mercy is when we don't get what we deserve, okay? So we, we deserve punishment. We deserve God's wrath. God instead poured that out on his son Jesus on the cross. And so we don't get that when we've taken him as our Lord and Savior. When we become Christians, we receive his mercy in that way. But he goes beyond that. He, he doesn't simply end it with, okay, you're not going to get the punishment you deserve. No, he gives grace. And that's where we get what we don't deserve, okay? So the riches of God's kingdom, being called joint heirs with Jesus, being called a son of the Fa Heavenly Father, all those things and more are ours because God is, has grace for on us. He shows us so much generosity and kindness. That's what his grace is. So mercy is we don't get what we deserve. Okay, grace is we get what we don't deserve. So, that's the idea. There's also a pretty cool acronym. I didn't make any of this up. This is all stuff that's probably older than I am. But regardless, um, the idea of grace, it, they came up with an acronym for it. Meaning, God's riches at Christ's expense. So, Jesus paid the price on the cross, right? And so, we get the kingdom of heaven opened wide for us, and we get to inherit that. And along with who knows what all else, um, because of what Jesus did, it's God's riches at Christ's expense, right? So that's grace. But let's look in the Bible. And let's see what how the Bible defines this. So I'm going to be going to the book of Ephesians, chapter two. I'm going to look at verses eight and nine. Here we go. God saved you by His grace. When you believed, and you can't take credit for this, it is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for good things we've done, so none of us can boast about it. Guys, grace is a gift. All we can do, the only thing we can do to quote-unquote earn it, and I use that term very loosely, um, is just believe in God. Believe in who He is. Believe He, he can do what He says He can do. And he saves us. And that's it. And it, 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 there's nothing we can do to add to it. There's nothing we can do to take away from it. It's entirely on Christ. Okay? So that's what grace is in regards to our salvation. Christ died on our behalf so that we could inherit the kingdom with him. So, but that's not where it ends. Because grace doesn't just isn't just a thing that happens at the moment of salvation, okay? It's something that we need every day of our lives because we can't get through life God's way without His grace, okay? So let's look at it. We're going to be looking at the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And Paul's talking about basically this idea that he had a weakness, uh, a problem, and God wouldn't take it away. He called Paul called it a thorn in the flesh. Okay, so listen for that term as I read. I'm going to be in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 5. That experience is worth boasting about, but I'm not going to do it. I will boast only about my weaknesses. If I wanted to boast, I would be no fool in doing so, because I would be telling the truth. But I won't do it, because I don't want anyone to give me credit beyond what they see in my life or here in my message, even though I have received such wonderful revelations from God. So, to keep me from becoming proud, I was given a thorn in the flesh, a messenger from Satan to torment me and keep me from becoming proud. Three different times I begged the Lord to take it away. Each time he said, My grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weaknesses so that the power of Christ can work through me. That's why I take pleasure in my weaknesses and in the insults, hardships, persecutions, and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. So guys, God's grace in everyday life. When we are weak, He is strong. He gives us grace to live life. 
So that's God's grace in a nutshell. I hope it helps you guys. And just remember that I love you, and I'll see you next time.